everyone, this is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment, and today I want to cover the uh, X Air Mixer by Behringer. Uh, we use the XR12. I'm going to cover the app and everything that you need to know for a DJ setup. I'm not going to go deep into everything, but these are the most common questions that you need to figure out or being able to troubleshoot at an event. So I'm gonna go in the app, how to set it up, how to connect to the Wi-Fi, so that way we can not lose signal or roaming around the room. So that way at weddings, we'll be able to roam around the room, adjust the microphone, the sound level. And it's a really good solution because I feel that going out of the speakers, it's a really harsh sound. So what we have over here is we have the JBL speakers. They have a built-in app in their speakers, but I don't like it. It's clunky, it's hard, and it doesn't sound as good. So I like to use the Behringer mixer, even though we have the capability of those speakers. And I just feel that we get a much more targeted, better, rich sound uh, coming from the iPad. So we're gonna dive into the software. I'm gonna show you how to set everything up and how to probably troubleshoot most of the problems and the fail safe of how to reset the mixer just in case, coming up. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do when setting up this mixer is you're going to go into the Wi-Fi because we're sending us a, a wireless Wi-Fi signal from the mixer to this. So that way we control it from anywhere in the room. So you're going to go to Wi-Fi. You're going to select it. So the Wi-Fi router is going to be on top of the box and the password's going to be there. This one's already there. It says no internet, which is fine because we're not internet. Next thing you're going to do is you can go to mix station or you can go to X air, same program, a little bit different. And then what you want to do is you want to go into network, select a mixer. Cause if this was connected to another mix or not, so it's found our mixer, we're going to load it. And this is a good example. See there, there's no sliders. Take this all the way over and take it back. Boom, there's all your sliders. So essentially you have your microphone on one. Those are two, this would be our reception. So we have two wireless, nothing on here. And then we have our DDJ. So now if you notice, we bring this up. Cool. So there's our sound. We always want to start with everything down low. Now you're going to notice when you go into this channel, go to input. It's where most of the stuff is. This is going to be your high pass filter that you can turn on and off. I use this for the microphones. This is going to be your gain. If it requires phantom power, you're going to turn the phantom power on. So that's the same for mic one and two. Go over here. This could be our DDJ. Um, there's an the input and then there's also the high pass filter. Depending on where we're at, we like to cut out some of the lows because some have uh, noise restrictions. Cool. So sends. This is if you want to reroute things. Usually stay away from this, but essentially what you have here is you have bus one, bus two. And so what you can do is, do you want this volume to control the bus volume? So what I mean is you have to turn this up first and then you can turn this up to get sound coming out of it. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. Or if you want to do pre, the bus one is up without having this to be up and you'll still get volume. So let me show you that on here. So if we go to bus two, then we pull that up, there's sound now, even though that there's none here. So it, it just really depends on how you want to route things. So usually what we'll do is for microphones so our main thing is we'll use this bus two we'll use it for a recorder so that way the microphones are always up it doesn't matter if we pull these up or down the sound is still going to go to the recorder but we don't want the ddj or the music going to the recorder we just want the microphones so it really just depends on how you want to route the sound but just remember pre and post that's what you want to use pre means they're individual and then you can control them separately. Post means post the fader is going to have sound. So even though these could be way up, unless you have these up, you're not going to get any sound. So it just depends on how you want to route the signal. Um, because the worst thing is trying to kill the music and you have to kill it on the mains. And then you also have to kill it on the bus too. So if you want them connected together, you're going to do post. So post is like a connected sound. Pre is individual. 
go to the gate. Now I usually leave the gate alone unless I have a bunch of background noise, but I'll give you a little bit of music and then, so I'll give you a little bit of music. So then what we do, imagine this is feedback. We can just move that gate up. until it gets to that volume level and then it'll bring it down so i usually leave the gate off unless i have a, a bad hiss or a grounding issue something like that main thing is dynamics so you can see it's a lot quieter without the dynamics and the dynamics are really good for getting like a rich clean sound you know you set your levels properly you're gonna set the tack and release pretty much nothing you gotta trim off the top and then what you're gonna do is leave this all the way to wet and then you have your gain where you can bring your gain up and down so usually let's bring this down let's turn this on and then watch when you bring this up and so what this is doing is this is bringing the overall level up but it's bringing those peaks down it's going to be a rich warm full sound and it's a really cool trick to use especially when it comes to uh, our music but it's really good for microphones which i'll show you here in a little bit um and we'll do it so that way if somebody yells on the microphone it can compress it down next thing we have is our eq this has an rta which is gonna give us a real-time readout. So as we bring this up, we can see all the different frequencies and where they're hitting, and that way we can EQ the sound the way that we like. So there's the EQ on the individual tracks. Then if you click here, so you got EQ here, click main and click this essentially this is your eq on the whole mains and you can see it's much more targeted so if you have a bad frequency in one of these you can go in here and then you can pull down that individual frequency makes it really really nice for some fine tuning on everything you can also go to the bus and then that way you can um this is our recorder that's why it's labeled recorder and then we can EQ it on that individual level. So depending on, on what we're doing. So we're sending stuff differently. We can do those kind of things. A common thing that people will do is you'll run your tops to your main XLR. And then you what you do is a sub out. So then essentially what you're doing is you're only running your subs to your bus. And then what you do is you'll take this and you'll pull all those high frequencies out. So that way it's not going to your sub. It's almost like a crossover and you're getting a nice clean sound coming out of the bus. So a lot of times we'll use that for the mains are the tops. Then we'll use the bus one for the subs. Inserts, you don't gotta worry about. This is essentially if you wanna do effects. And then we got our output. I don't use DCAs for uh, DJ stuff. So now let's go into metering. And what this will do is this will show you all the volume levels that you're sending signal to. So essentially if we go here, it's gonna show us five, six, and it's gonna show us our gain. And then we can go to the bus and they'll show you the volume level on the bus. And then it'll show you the output. So depending on what we're doing, it can show you this in case you're like, oh, I don't know where all the signal is. I'll use this when I'm recording so I can record to this. Shows, if you want to save a whole show, you can do that. But what I like doing is, here's your effects. So then that way you can click your effects, you can have it on, then go down to effects, and this is the amount of effects. So now you notice you're like, oh, the volume's up, should be working. No, you gotta go to the volume. So you have the effect amount and then you have the master amount.
So you got your mains, you got your buses, and then you got all your effects. So there's many different things that you can do with this depending on your needs. So what we have over here is we, if you notice, we have our DDJ going left and right. So that way we're sending this side out to the left and we're sending this to the right. A shortcut, you can get to your EQs, your gates and your dynamics really quick here. You notice this yellow bar here is for the mains. So if you notice, as we pull this down, so you got your main volume, then you got your bus. So you can see which ones have volumes attached to it. It will show you in the yellow here. Routing, don't worry about this. This is set up exactly the way we want it now. Recording, this is really cool because you can record so we'll go, let's do a recording. And so essentially we can send this. What we're doing is we're gonna send one channel to the left and then we're gonna have another channel to the right. So that way, if I wanted to send these two, I can send one to the left and one to the right. And then this just creates a backup recording for whatever we're doing, if we wanna record our set or if we wanna record speeches. So that's what I'll use for a backup recorder with our videography company. Setup, this is general. If for whatever reason you can't get sound coming out of here, push this button right here and this will reset the mixer and then you have to go through and reset everything, label everything, all that. You have your network here. Here's your IP address for your network. If you need to select a different mixer or let's say it's too close and it's picking up interference, not the right one, you'll go here, select another mixer, boom, it will load all the settings. Let's go to layout. Layout here right now is one through eight. So that way it's showing all these. Or we do this, it'll do nine through 16 DCAs or effects. But usually what we're gonna do is we're gonna select with all channels. So that will keep everything or one through eight. So you can custom make different layouts. The thing that I want to show you on this is when you get to event, it's like, oh man, what do I want? So let's say this was a uh, iPod. So we'll go set up, scribble ship three, Let's change the color. Let's go to iPod left done. So that way we don't have to forget what it is. And so that's how it's labeled. So that's everything there. Master volume here and individual track volume. Audio here. Don't worry about any of this. Just leave this all alone. 